screen, we ask you to call that number and uh, book them to come to your church or to your event. And they're going to be back in just a few moments to sing for the congregation in here. But uh, if you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn with me, if you will, to 1 Samuel chapter 17. I told the congregation a little bit earlier that uh, God gave me a message, and and I'm not going to dwell on it a long time, but I want uh, you to understand what the Lord is trying to get the the message. I want you to understand the message He's trying to get out to the church today. We learn in 1 Samuel, we know the story of David and Goliath. I think everyone in here, even the little children, have heard the story at some point in time. But in in 1 Samuel 17, the Lord took me here last night, and he pointed out verse 2, 3, and 4. And and I want to read it. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubics and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and, or mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass, or 194 pounds, is what his coat weighed. Uh, he, and, and, and he was about 13 feet tall, using the 25-inch uh, span for a cubic. Uh, and he, even if you don't, he was 9 or 10 feet, but he was 13 feet by 25 inches. And he goes on to say, uh, and his his coat weighed 194 pounds, and he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and the spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. The spearhead weighed 23 pounds, just 23 pounds just for the spear, and the, the, the handle was like a weaver's beam. But let's forget about all of that. Let's look at what the Word of God is talking. And, and this is what the Lord gave me last night. And, and I know that God had to give it to me because I surely couldn't think of anything like this. But I was praying and seeking because I, God had, well, I won't go there. Because I, but last night he said, he said, today's church is like yesterday's Israel. I was in my recliner, and I was reading, and he said, Today's church is like yesterday's Israel. And I sit there, and this is before he showed me this verse or chapter. I was sitting there, and I, I said, What? He said, Today's church is like yesterday's Israel. And that's when he gave me this scripture. He said, The church is in a position... The church is over here in position. And he said, the devil is on the other side of the valley. And he said, the devil is making accusations, intimidating the church. Putting the church down, ridiculing the church. And the church is just staying in position. You see, Israel went out that day to get in the battle. Saul had led Israel to get into the battle. And today the church is all ready and the preachers are all ready to say, let's go into the battle. And the church says, yeah, we're ready to go fight the devil. Hallelujah. We got the power. But the church is staying on the mountain. The church is over here on the mountain. And the devil is standing over there intimidating, ridiculing, putting down and telling the church what we can do and what we can't do. The devil today is sending out accusations. The devil today is saying, church, you can't mention Jesus in certain places. Church, you can't pray in certain places. Church, you can't put crosses in certain places. And the church is over here. We're saying we're prepared for battle. But nobody will cross the valley. Goliath is on the other side, intimidating Israel, God's people. 
making fun of them, mocking them. I'm one man. And today the devil is telling the church, I'm one man. Who's going to stand up against me? Who's going to come against me? And the church is still sitting in position. Saul took his country, his soldiers, out to the battlefield. That's why I wanted that song sung, I'm on the battlefield. Because Saul took them out to the battlefield. And they were all arrayed with their armor and everything, getting ready to get in the battle. But every one of them were cowards. And that's where the church is today. Today's church is like yesterday's Israel. Today's church is sitting on the mountain. And the enemy is intimidating us. And there's not any Christians that will step up and speak their mind. They, wanna, they don't want to tell the homosexuals uh, that you're going to burn in a devil's hell except you repent. Uh, they don't want to tell uh, those committing adultery you're going to burn in a devil's hell uh, except you repent. Uh, they don't want to tell the thieves, the liars, the robbers uh, that you're going to burn in a devil's hell uh, except you repent. Uh, they're not going to tell any of the evildoers uh, that hell is real. Uh, the fires of hell are gathered uh, for those those wicked and unbelievers, uh, they don't want to tell nobody anything. They're afraid somebody will leave the congregation. They're afraid they'll lose another church member. But praise God, God's looking for somebody in this last day that'll take the Word of God and step out in the valley and say, listen, uh, you may have a spear and a sword, uh, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Uh, my God is bigger than any government policy. My God is bigger than all the laws that man can bring. Uh, who am I to fear when God is with me? Uh, when Jesus Christ dwelleth within me, uh, how come uh, I should fear any man? Uh, why should we fear what man says? Uh, man can do nothing. And if God's in the midst of it. But he said, today's church. Congregation, I want you to hear what God had told me. He said, today's church is like yesterday's Israel. They come out with their spears and their swords for battle. They come out with the sword of the word. Today's church comes out, some of them. <laughs> Most churches won't even let you bring a Bible in the building now. But some, praise God, come out with their Bible. But they have no earthly idea what that Bible says. You can stop 20 Christians on the streets of downtown Southern Pines and quote Scripture or ask them to quote Scripture and tell you what the meaning of it is. And they cannot, they couldn't even tell you if it's in the New Testament or the Old Testament. The majority of the churchgoers today have absolutely no earthly idea what the Word of God says. They're depending on the man of God. They're depending on the man standing behind the pulpit to guide them in the right direction. And I'm telling you that the Word of God, the new covenant, is full of warnings from Matthew to Revelation, telling you that in the last days, the false prophets, the false preachers, the false teachers are going to step into the pulpit and they're going to deceive many. Many are going to fall by the wayside. Why? Because the pastors are going to mislead them and misdirect them and misguide them. And you say, well, Brother David, how do we know you're preaching the truth? The only way you're going to know is to know the Word of God. The only way you're going to know is to open your Bible and follow the Scripture. The only way you're going to know is to bow your heart before Jesus and pray to Him for wisdom and knowledge and understanding. The only way you're going to know is to know the Word of God. And your spirit will bear witness with mine that no sinner is going to inherit the kingdom of God. You have to be born again. And when you're born again, the old things pass away and all things become you. You become a new creature in Christ. And Israel that day the praise God they had God on their side but they wouldn't place their trust in God. They knew God Jehovah. God Jehovah had delivered them and delivered them and delivered them and had blessed them and blessed them and blessed them but they couldn't place their trust in Him. They said with their lips oh how we trust God and we're going out to conquer this land. But let me say this they stayed on the mountain. Not one soldier would leave. And go out and face the enemy. And that's where the church is today. That's why they took prayer out of schools. There wasn't a body of Christ that would unite together and say, listen, we're not going to put up with this garbage. That's why today that 
And I thank God for Chick-fil-A. I don't care if everybody in this state hates me. It doesn't make any difference. I thank God for Chick-fil-A. I thank God for the president. You may, you homosexuals, you sick people, let me tell you something. Listen, we, you may have your t- 